So our saint of the day, Saint Lawrence Lorenzo Ruiz, he was a Filipino man uh, born in the year 1600 and uh, of a Filipino and Chinese parents, so one of each, and uh, a man of faith, grew up in a family of faith, and uh, he went off and got married and married a lady named Rosaria, lovely name, Rosary. Uh, so they had three children together. And then for some reason, he was accused of murdering a Spaniard, of murdering a man, uh, of which he was innocent. But the way the, 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 the accusation was made, the way it was going on, uh, there was a plot made against him. And so he thought the safest thing to do was actually to flee. So he got on a boat headed for Japan with a number of Dominican priests and no sooner had they landed in Japan than uh, they realized a great persecution of Christians had broke out there. So all of the Christians were being rounded up, uh, tortured, and or killed. So talk about out of the frying pan into the fire, like he lands in, lands in Japan and then there's this manhunt going on there for all Christians. Obviously he lands with Dominicans, so kind of not exactly subtle, um, with their dangling rosary beads and all of that. So. Uh, he lands in, I'm not sure how far he got from the port, if he, if he even got from the port, but uh, he was arrested and brought to Nagasaki. And as we all know, uh, the Japanese were very inventive when it came to their tortures. So along with the general standard starvings and beatings and uh, being thrown into prison and all of that, uh, they tried to get them to renounce their faith by forcing water into their mouth so much so that it would come out their eyes, ears, nose, mouth, and fill their, just, you, you just completely blow it you to the point of almost explosion. Um, that, after that, they didn't, none of the Dominicans or himself renounced the faith, so then they use this other torture where they hang you upside down by your ankles and cut a slit in your forehead so that you're, you don't go unconscious because of the pressure of blood in your head, but you will drain your blood out slowly. Not quick enough to kill you quickly, but um, apparently it's excruciating. But they leave one hand free. So you're hanging upside down, you one hand free. And whatever the, the sign that's agreed beforehand is, you tap the ground or you tap your whatever it is, uh, then that's the sign that you've renounced the faith and they let you go. So all you have to do, just the object, if it's an object or whatever it is, just tap that, just touch that, and we let you down. It's all good. All this torture, all this pain can stop. All you have to do is just put your hand there, just touch that thing as you're dangling upside down for days. Just touch it. All you have to do, guys, that's all you have to do. Just give it one little tap. One little tip, one little finger just touches it, and you're good to go. You can go home, back to your family. Go back to your family. And he didn't. And not only did he not do so, there's this astounding quotation from him. Lawrence or Lorenzo refused to recant. According to the record of his death, his last words were, I'm a Catholic and wholeheartedly do accept death for God. Had I a thousand lives, all these I, I would offer. Do with me as you please. Had I a thousand lives, all of these I would offer up. Do with me as you please. My goodness. I read things like that and I feel absolutely useless. I don't know about you. I just, I just, I read that and I go, yeah. I think, I, would I have tapped out? I don't know. I hope not. I, I hope not. But it's just, you read accounts like that and you go my goodness like just that kind of faith do you know you've got kids and family at home you've got a whole future ahead of you all you have to do is just and then you like you know the way your head would go like i can i can renounce the faith to them but you know what i mean then when i get home i can just start practicing again right you know that sounds like a good deal <laughs> would you be tempted would you like because you know i just tell the boys okay i renounce the lord or whatever and then once you know, you get confession, and you're good to go again, that, right? You could do that, couldn't you? But you just know in your heart of hearts, not only is it about staying faithful to the Lord in the time of trial, but it's about witnessing to him, also to those guards, and also to those, and maybe even, maybe they weren't even aware that anyone knew of their story. You know what I mean, like if you're arrested in a prison, how do you know that anyone's going to know or care whether you live or die? I mean, it's not like, you know, I'm going to, they're going to write such marvelous books about me. There are going to be statues of me all around. Yes, of course, I, 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 I hold on to the faith regardless of whatever comes, of course, because I know I'm going to be world famous. 
like they didn't know any, like, like they did not know we'd be talking about them 400 years later. Could all have happened in a tiny little dungeon off in Nagasaki. No one would know. Just tap out and you get your life back. And then you can jump back into the faith, right? But they just knew that's just, the Lord deserves better. I can't do that. I can't. I won't do that. I would rather die. I just marvel. It's just so beautiful. Now, something that, that Father Paul, the founder of my community, would often say to us is that that kind of courage, that kind of courage is a grace. You know, so don't presume that we have to head, it, head into that kind of persecution saying, okay, I think I've got the whole mart martyrdom thing sorted. I, I think I can do this. You know, that's, that's a, probably a dangerous attitude. But to say, Lord, I, I, I rely on everything from your hand, even the grace of, of martyrdom should it, should it come. Like, I, re I rely on you for everything, Lord. Of myself, I'm nothing. I rely on you for everything. And that brings us into our, our first reading from Job. Um, you heard the recount of how Satan says the only reason basically he's faithful to you is because you've blessed him with such wealth, health, family. He has everything. Of course he's faithful to you. You've taken such good care of him. Take those things away and I guarantee you he will curse you to your face. That's what Satan says to him. And so little by little, well, no, that's not true. Oh, in one fell swoop, actually, everything is taken away from him. One thing after the next, boom, boom, boom. Uh, and then he's left with nothing, not even his family, wealth, health, and he's got sores in his body and everything. And he uses a profound line, which I, I, I love. Naked I came from my mother's womb, naked I shall return. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken back. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I, they're the words of a saint. The Lord has given me, the Lord has taken back. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That everything we have is a gift, and should the Lord take it back, blessed be the name of the Lord. And to a degree, all of us are going to go through this to a greater or lesser degree. As we get older, like, the wealth that we've amassed, actually it's kind of point, when you're like 85, 86, 90, uh, if you're a millionaire, it actually makes, doesn't make any difference. What are you going to do? Skydiving? You know, <laughs> buy, buy a Ferrari? Like, at that age, you, you know, if, I mean, what, what, what difference does it make? Like, you've got 10 billion in the bank, so what? It means nothing to you. Okay, you've already got two hip replacements, but they're not quite as limber as they used to be, and your memory's starting to fail. And all these things, all these gifts that you had, little by little, you're kind of, I don't want to say forced to give them back, but you're given the opportunity to give back everything that you've received to God. You're given the opportunity to live this, 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 this reading of Job. The Lord has given, the Lord has taken away. Or maybe even better, the Lord has given, I give everything back to him. Blessed be the name of the Lord, because the Lord is enough for me. That's, this, 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 is, this is not easy. But I think when we think of heaven, when we think of the, the brevity of our, the shortness of our lives, and we think of eternity, whatever we're asked to give up here, difficult though it may be, and that could be health, it could be wealth, it could be popularity, it could be family, people, people suffer greatly in this life. but it will end. And if through it all I'm holding on to the Lord, if through it all these sacrifices and crosses and these things that I'm being stripped of prepare me for heaven, when I get there, when, I, when I'm standing before the Lord and I've lived a life full of love and as everything has been given away, I've offered it back to the Lord out of love and I've been transformed into love, then I'm ready for heaven. I'm ready to be with God who is love for all eternity. It's not easy and it's not easy to just watch someone else suffer either but it will end and we can transform everything through the grace of God into love suffering the cross death all of these things everything can be transformed into love so we have more power than we realize but it's not not in the worldly sense not in the worldly sense but even when I'm knocked down even when we're persecuted, even when I fail, even when I'm suffering, all of those things can be transformed in love. So what's being built up 
around me, I just don't really, I don't really care about anymore. Not that, I, I'm, not that I'm indifferent to other people, but it's just not, a, like if people build a statue of you, chances are they only build a statue of you after you're dead, right? And after you're dead, it won't matter at all to you if there's a statue of you down here somewhere. Who cares? Who cares? Like you've got some, I don't know, where would you be in a stadium? If you're in the hall of the greats or something, or some sport, right? Who cares? Who cares? If you're in heaven, you couldn't care less. If you're in hell, you've got other problems. <laughs> all right? it, just, it, just, it doesn't matter at all. But if I've lived a life of love and I've been transformed into love through the decisions I've made and through holding on to the Lord despite the cross, you know, my wealth gets taken from me and I say, blessed be the name of the Lord. My family gets taken from me, blessed be the name of the Lord. I get inflicted with some sores or health. my health is taken from me and I say, blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm ready for heaven. I'm ready to be with him. I'm ready for heaven. And so this is that paradox of the cross it, it, it looks like abandonment it looks like a curse it looks all wrong but love transforms it and so we ask the good lord today as we offer this mass for father niall a confrere of mine whose birthday it is today and for a dear friend of ours who's in hospital at the moment we offer this mass for him as well Lord, we pray that we may transform all things into love through your grace, through your power. For the Lord has given, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord.